Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Loki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Well, today I'm going to be looking at the Holy Grail Front et tu Brute event that's going to be coming up pretty soon once the current one ends, or pretty close to it. Uh, I'm going to take a look at it right now, kind of check out the banner, check out what it's going to be about, and talk about it for a little bit. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, it helps out the channel a whole bunch. I forget that I'm supposed to ask for this, but whatever, you guys do pretty good on both of them, so I never feel the need to actually <laughs> ask too much. So let's go into it. Holy Girlfriend, et tu brute? So yeah, you just need to clear Fuy Fuyuki. We don't know when it currently starts, but if we look at how long it took after the current event ended in JP. So we go to February, January. This ends on February 3rd and then literally February 3rd. And then this is event goes on for I think two weeks. Yeah, the 3rd till the 17th. That's about two weeks. The event summary, what is it? It's a holy grail front, uh, a grail front battle, uh, which basically is like Ah, uh, man, what's the best way to kind of... Maybe the game mechanics will show it up here. So, yeah, you kind of move around in a grid, and then you select units, and you also have to protect your guy. But it's not like traditional battles. It's like a kind of one-on-one. -on -one. There's a little bit... It's like a different, completely different way of playing Fago, basically. So you're going to have to think it out and do a little bit different and probably have more units. If you don't have a lot of units, because uh, sometimes it requires very specific units, like for this one, you need a, uh, a saber, a... Um, caster and a berserker. This is a lancer, berserker, caster. You can select those three. And then depending on what you select, they all have different numbers depending on their rarity. And then you can kind of just go in and do stuff. And yeah, that's basically the event. It really favors people who have a lot of units saved up. Because a lot of units will be good in certain scenarios. And some of them are very good at 1v1ing or even sometimes 1v2ing. And others are not. Um, and sometimes the AI can also get a little funky here at the beginning. But I always thought that the, the first one that we got of this was pretty fun. I know some people really didn't like it. Uh, just because it's so different from how you usually play Fago, Which, for the most part, for most Fago events, it's literally just like, yo, grind a whole bunch. And that's it. This isn't really a grind. You just kind of have to play a little map, have a little fun, and just be done. And there's not a lot of consequences for not doing it, so... I think anything that kind of breaks up the gameplay that is basically just like loop, 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 or if it's a story, it's like, I don't know, get ready for the worst boss fights you've ever seen in your life. Um, this is a little bit cool, and I like it. So yeah, that's the kind of event it's going to be. I'm actually kind of curious to see how many people actually like it, so if you have any specific feelings about it, feel free to let me know. But I've always thought it was pretty cool. Um, but that's basically how it's going to go, and the first one is going to be available on the third, and then the next one, the fourth. 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, until the 7th one, which is the final one. There's going to be some new changes, so enemy servants can now craft essence equipped on them. Enemy servants no longer have differing action limits. You will now follow the usual 3 actions of max per turn limit that the player has. Previously they didn't have this and it made it pretty annoying. Defense buffs will no longer have its turn cost reduced by one turn on the next turn. If the enemy is defeated or when the battle turn limit reaches zero, so that can be carried to the next battle. And buffs and debuffs that activate after one turn will only activate on the next battle if there are no other turns left for this battle. So a little bit of changes there. And then they had game updates, but I'm not sure if we're going to have any. Oh, they're going to have the Olympic bloomers and probably a these buffs will be there. I think we already have the Bodica animations and the same thing goes for Caligula. And yeah. And that's basically it. That's the Grail Front. You can see here specific. You also get tickets for doing it, so... Pretty, pretty easy and pretty good reward from it. And that's very simple. There's no, like, shop. There's no anything. You just kind of play. And that's going to be here for two weeks. So you have plenty of time. You can even choose to just completely ignore it and get some other stuff done in the meantime. And then just knock them all out after the, the ninth, which is what I did last time. Uh, so let's go. Summoning campaign, which is going to be the banner that comes with it. Let's talk about this for a little bit. So, uh, this is what the banner should, in theory, be. Um, it's probably going to change, and they're going to give one banner to Romulus and one banner to Altera. The reason is, is that when JP got this, I'll emphasize this again, they didn't have rotate, they didn't have pity, so it was a rotating banner. We have pity, rotating banners completely fuck us, so they're probably going to change this around, and I don't remember if they're going to keep, yeah, they're probably all the time rate up. There was no single rate ups for any of these units, so that's not coming, so chances are just two banners. 
And it'll, the five stars here are Altera, Romulus Quernus, Astrea, Nero Claudius, Caesar, Romulus, and Bodica. Um, in terms of these three stars, the three stars are in every single banner. You don't need to tell me how good they are. I will say Bodica is very good if you are going for someone who is anti-Roman or you're going to be going against someone that can turn everyone Roman, which is what Romulus Quernus does. So they actually have a lot of synergy with together on that kind of stuff. Um, now in terms of the five star, I'm going to say right now, in terms of the five and the four star, this is a very easy skip banner. The only person that most people will probably want from here is either Romulus Queerness or Nero. Those are the two basic ones. And Nero is basically here because she's super popular and she's story lock limited. So it can be kind of a pain in the ass to get her. And she has constant costume updates as well. So it's good to get her if you just want to have a bunch of costume updates to go with it. I would say those are the two main ones. Not to say Altera doesn't have fans, but Altera can very easily be gone in just through random happenstance, and also there are tickets where you can just pick a free unit, and if you really care about her that much, you could easily get her from that. Um, but yeah, I, I like Altera, but I don't think I see too many people actually going like crazy trying to go for her, but if you are gonna be crazy going trying to be going for her, I guess this is your best chance, because you'll be have an actual solo rate up banner type dealio, or she'll be the only five star on it. So yeah, let's look into them. Altera, I'll go here. Um, these two, this is a very good single target ruler whose only real issue is that there's a lot of single target rulers in the game. And Nero Claudius is a AoE saber with a lot of funky skills that are actually pretty good. Um, even if they do seem a little bit funky. Um, I think she doesn't hit very much though on her NP, which is kind of a bummer if you're in arts. Yeah, it only hits once. That's kind of a killer, a mood killer. Because if you need multiple hits, if you're going to be an arts, um, if you're going to have an arts NP and you're going to work, there's just not enough. And none of her skills kind of back that up. But I don't know. I still like her a whole bunch. She's very useful in a setting where you have to, like, um, you know you might potentially die a whole bunch. Because this ability right here, which is the Thrice Setting Sun, gives herself gut status three times for five turns, which is pretty insane. Then she also has a way to heal herself and also recover HP, and this ability also gets buffed to be better, so... I think there's merit to her, even if it's not necessarily for grinding a whole bunch. But yeah, this is Altera. I'll be looking at their skills that are actually buffed. Scourge of God A increases party MP damage for three turns, remove all enemies' defensive buffs, uh, which is this one right here, which is the good one, because it can get rid of anti-purge defense. Her second skill is the natural body EX, but then eventually it turns into this. Which is the perfect construct EX. They had to buffer twice on one skill. Charges on NP gauge, increases on crit damage for three turns, increases on offensive debuff resistance for three turns, offensive debuffs, recovers own HP, increases own crit star absorption for one turn, and this is what it is. MP it gets to 30% at level 10, crit damage is 30% at level 10, 120% debuff resistance, 3000 heal, and absorption is 300% and a five turn cooldown. And then our third skill is Star Emblem EX. Increase on attack for three turns, and then gain some crit stars. It's thirty percent attack and fifteen stars, which is pretty bad, which is pretty good. Not the craziest thing in the world, but considering that it has never needed a buff, it's still extremely solid. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing A, and Divinity B. And then our third append skill is a bonus against foreigners. Her Noble Phantasm is Rank A, Photon Ray, Photon Dragon, Sword of the War God. Uh, one hit, rank A, deals damage to all enemies, uh, reduces their defense for three turns. Very basic. Very basic. She's really old. That's why she's needed to get so many buffs. Because by the time they buff this one, it needed another buff to be better. And I think her NP also needs another buff. Because it's just not a lot of damage. Considering what most people do, it's just like, deal damage, reduce some defense. It's okay. It's not, uh, you know, it is what it is in some cases. But yeah, that's Altera. And this is Quirinus. So uh, there's something that I should note, because I didn't know this, and this is something that's actually pretty key. 
I don't, there's a, there was apparently a bug with Romulus where he wasn't actually applying any of his stack attack. And this had been a thing since he launched. I don't know if he's still like that. If you know the answer, feel free to tell me just so I know for future reference. But yeah, there was a bug with him where he just didn't work. So I don't know if that still applied to him, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if I see an update on there, let me know and I'll figure it out and we'll go from there. But yeah, I'm not sure if they ever fixed the bug. I don't know because I don't have him. Um, so let's go. For skill, throw an Aquarius EX, increase party attack for three turns, increase party critical damage for three turns, further increase critical damage by Roman allies for three turns, 500% chance to inflict Roman debuff for five turns to all enemies, 20%, 20%, and 30%. Second skill, grant self invisibility for two attacks, three turns, charges on MP gauge against crit 10 crit stars. <clears throat> Third skill, nine lives Roma slaying the hundred heads Roman style. Increase on buster performance for three turns, increase on crit star absorption for one turn, grant self on attack, activate debuff for, for three turns, inflict the Roman trait debuff for five turns to enemies when crit attacking, 30% buster up and 500% absorption. Magic Resistance A, Independent Action B+, Divinity of the Chief God B+, Third Append Skill is a bonus against rulers, and Rank EX, Noble Phantasm, 5 Hit Buster, deals damage to all enemies, deals 100% of 20% X extra damage equal to the, uh, to Roman enemies, where the Roman Traits count stack is max 10 sacks, inflict Roman Trait debuff for 5 turns to them, grants party the Roman Trait for 5 turns, and it deals 300% damage to 500% depending on NP level, and then it also increases the party's attack for three turns, and it's 10% for the most chance for the most of the time you are ever going to use it. This is another interesting unit. And unfortunately, the game has kind of if you're going to be on a buster, you kind of have to have something that gives you NP gauge, and he has 30%, which is all right on a six-turn cooldown. But honestly, 50% is kind of the way to go. Um, uh, you could probably still work if you're using the two buster up. I'm trying to avoid the name of the second one for as long as I can until it's time to come. But you, everyone knows who he is. But just in case you don't know, I'm not going to say it here. But yeah, he's definitely... I thought at the time that he was really good. But with the bug stuff, I just don't know if he's good anymore. So it makes it a little bit like... If you like the character, go for it. Keep summoning for him. They are pretty strong. Um, in my mind, as long as they actually have their abilities and they're working, I just don't know, unfortunately. If you do know, let me know, just so I know for future reference. But yeah, this is, uh, this is Romulus. The dude who's supposed to be very strong, but I don't actually know if they ever fixed his bug. And the only reason I knew he was even bugged was that like, apparently a girl had a similar bug and they had to fix it. I just don't know if they actually went back and fix Rom fixed Romulus himself. So there you go, that's kind of what this is. It's a very easy skip banner for a lot of people, honestly. It's just going to be a very simple event where you're just going to get like five, seven tickets and then a grail at the end. There's not really much more you could ask for, honestly. You, you get some material stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, that's all you're really getting is some tickets, some of that, and then you're good. And then you call it a day. And I think there's probably a story related to it, and it's a simple little story, and you go through it and you're fine. But yeah, that's the next event coming up. And then we're going to be followed up with the much longer grind event. If you're into grindy events, don't worry. There's one coming up. There's coming for Valentine's Day. But as long as we wait for that to happen, we at least have this. So yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to tell me what you plan to do. If you do end up summoning on this banner, I wish you the best of luck. I'm not summoning on it. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.